scores are right there. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. So here's here's what I saw. I mean, this, this is what I saw that's so important that, that, that maybe, maybe you saw what I saw. The first thing that I saw, I learned during the stage teams. And what I learned about all of you, and I don't, I don't know any of you, I met you for about a minute, um, is that I saw teamwork. I saw everybody helping each other. We had a lot of instruments to move around. Professor Snyder's got, he's got a lot on it. You know, everybody's got to go here. You're all paying attention. I didn't see anybody have a, you know, a scowl on their face. Right? And you were all helping each other. And this is part of why music and studying music and practicing and being an ensemble, this is civility. This, this, you are learning, you are now part of learning how to be a community of people helping to a common good and cause. Better yet, we got to experience this wonderful performance as a result of your hard work and dedication to what you're doing. Here's the second thing I see you know, in this ensemble. You're all different ages. Did you notice that? I could I can't tell you anybody's age right now. I don't know, maybe you're 37, maybe 42. And I, I, you see, music breaks barriers, breaks down barriers that um, unfortunately do exist in, in life, which is, it makes us all very similar. It makes us all very much the same. And in that comes this marvelous opportunity for everybody to forget about when was your birthday or where were you born or what food do you eat or anything like that, but it's, we're going to play some music. Right, so isn't this just a wonderful gift that we all have in our life to be able to use it? And you really embody that. I saw that tonight on and off. Um, in the first piece, Mercury, I, I thought I heard Mercury rising. I, I heard, I, the composer did such a great job of portraying that idea of, you know, Mercury in a thermometer or whatever, however Mercury was rising. The glockenspiel played so delicately, but that was, that to me was the silver in, in the mercury. And who's my triangle player? Who, somebody played triangle in the first or second piece. Oh, Eric. Eric. He's right here, hi. He's had a job over there, so his parents are here, and he's, he's going on the road. I love your triangle playing. Right, you have it up there, and the shape of the road.
and they're also, you notice it's pointed up towards the ceiling instead of pointed outwards. That by the time the sound of timpani gets first to the conductor and then out to the audience, it's the last of the, the wavelengths that are going to get out there because they're very large and they're moving a lot of air around. Okay, what's my point? When you play timpani, if you play a little bit more of what we call on the front side of the beat. So beat goes like this. So here's, this is what we'll call, this is correct. I mean, this is perfect. So sometimes you can play, or you can play, so this is the back side of the beat where then the orchestra or the band or the percussion ensemble will be held back or the rock band, whatever you might be playing in the funk band. Oftentimes the drum will play a little bit on the back side of the beat. And then there's the front side of the beat where you're pulling, trying to pull that beat along by playing, it's not playing early, but it's playing a Mario man so that you're, you're moving forward all the time. Your sound keeps moving instead of just being strike, strike. It's bump, bump, bump. It's sort of as though you're anticipating that. I think in one of those pieces that will help so that you don't get behind. The second thing is on vibraphone, if I may, just very quickly. And this is just a this is just quick vibes one on one in terms of pedaling. On a vibraphone, the pedal does not need to go to the floor. Doesn't need to go all the way. There is, I'm not going to turn this over, I'll dump it on the floor, but there's a long damper bar that stops that sound. This damper bar only needs to leave the bar. It doesn't need to go all the way down to the floor. So, uh, can you play vibraphone too? Wonderfully well. My suggestion is, by muffling with your foot, is put your toe as though, take my shoe off, as though it were your toes that were on the end of the body pedal, because our toes are the most sensitive part of our foot, instead of putting the, the, the ball of your foot on and then pressing down quite so hard. So when you do get into the, 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 uh, the intricacies of vibraphone, one of the first things you're gonna learn is about vibraphone dampening about the dampening of this. So you just don't have to put it all the way down. That's an incredibly subtle point, meaning that your ensemble has really zeroed in on so many wonderful aspects of both the pieces that you play and the way that you're playing. I'm just incredibly impressed with Professor Snyder. Unbelievable job in the room. Congratulations.